This is video 10 in the grade 12 chapter work energy and power and in this video we're going to look at average power for example the power developed the average power developed by the car engine here in this example so what we've got here is a car moving at constant velocity of 20 meters per second and we want to know what the power output of this car's engine is to maintain that velocity of 20 meters per second. So in order to calculate power, we obviously need the work done by the engine. And the useful work done by the engine would be that forward force of the engine multiplied by the displacement of the car. The car is going to be displaced to the right. So the forward force of the engine is doing work, useful work, and the car is being displaced a certain distance forward. To calculate power, we'd need to know how much useful work was done per unit time. So if we substitute our formula for useful work done into that equation, force multiplied by displacement and then divided by the time interval, we should recognize this term in the expression. And that term is the rate of change of displacement. Well, that's the definition for average velocity. So we've derived an equation here for the power output of the engine. And what does it depend on? It depends on the force of the engine that the engine is exerting forwards and the velocity that the, the vehicle is traveling at, the average velocity. In our example, it's traveling at a constant velocity of 20 meters per second. So to calculate the power output of the engine, let's suppose that the forward force of the engine is a thousand newtons and the vehicle is moving at 20 meters per second, so it's 1000 multiplied by 20. That's going to give you 20,000 watts. So this vehicle, its engine, is doing 20,000 joules every second, and that's the power output of the engine. Let's understand that when a car moves at constant velocity, as soon as you see that word constant velocity, then you realize that the forces are balanced, and the forward force of the engine is exactly equal in magnitude to the frictional force. So this frictional force would also be a thousand newtons. Okay, so that's the formula for the average power output of this engine. It would be the force of the engine multiplied by the, the constant velocity that the car is maintaining. If a car were to be speeding up, then we'd work out the average velocity at which it's traveling and multiply that by the forward force on the engine. Let's look at a second example. This uh, example is on page 51 of your notes. And if we go there, to page 51, looking at a vehicle of mass 2,000 kilograms which is traveling up an inclined plane at a constant speed of 8 meters per second so those words 
constant speed are important because when that happens the forces are balanced and the net force is zero. This plane is inclined at 25 degrees to the horizontal and while the car travels up, drives up the hill, there's a frictional force of 1,500 newtons. So I want you to pause the video and attempt those questions. Okay, you've had a go at it. I want to slightly adjust that first question, uh, checkpoint 14A, where it was asking for the horizontal forces. I want to rather draw a free body diagram of the vehicle. So in exams we don't draw force diagrams, but rather free body diagrams. And I've drawn that diagram already. We've got the forward force of the engine up the slope. We've got friction opposing that motion. We've got the gravitational force acting straight down, vertically downwards. And we've got the normal force acting acting perpendicular to the slope. So make sure that all your forces are labelled with words and put a symbol next door because you're going to use those in any equations that follow. Part B is asking for the force of the engine. We need to calculate the force of the engine. So I've got a couple of the forces here already in the diagram. We've got the forward force of up the slope from the engine, so we're looking for that. And we've got a gravitational force which we know has components parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So if we slide our ruler across and draw a neat diagram, We can draw in the horizontal component of the weight. And we've been calling that FGX. That's acting parallel to the slope. So it's certainly going to be a force we need to consider when we're finding this applied force of the engine. The slope is inclined at 25 degrees to the horizontal, so we know that this is the 25 degree angle. And it's important to note these two words, constant velocity or constant speed, because that's going to help us solve the problem. When we see these words, we know that the net force is zero. So this upward force must be balanced by these two downward forces. So let's make that statement that F up the slope is going to be equal to friction plus the horizontal component of the weight. And if you go to the problem you'll see that the frictional force was given to you. That was 1500 newtons. And then we need to add to that the horizontal component of the weight. And we know that to be F G sine theta. And theta here being 25 degrees. So let's carry on with the calculation. We've got our frictional force. To that we're going to add F G which is M G the weight times sine 25 degrees. The mass of the car was given to us at, as 2000 kilograms. G we know to be 9.8 multiplied by sine of 25 degrees. So we still got our frictional force, which we know, and to that we're going to add 8,283 
0.92 newtons. So that is the horizontal component of the weight down the slope. And that gives us our answer for our forward force of the engine of 9,783.32 newtons up the slope. So we've answered question B. We set out to find the forward force of the engine and we knew because it was traveling at constant velocity that these forces needed to be balanced. The downward force is balanced with the upward force and we made that statement and we finally came to 9783.32 newtons. Please don't forget to work out the horizontal component of the weight down the slope. In part C, it finally asked us for the power output of the engine and because we are traveling at a constant velocity of 8 meters per second and we know the forward force of the engine to be 9,783.32 newtons. We can then use our equation we just derived. The power output of the engine is going to be the force applied by the engine multiplied by the constant velocity of the, of the vehicle. So that's 9783.32 multiplied by the 8 meters per second and we get our, ourselves an answer of 78,000 266,56 and the unit for power is the watt. So there's the power output of the engine and that forward force would be doing positive work on the car and doing useful work on the car and the rate at which work is being done by that engine would be nearly 80,000 joules per second.